there's no draft where five franchise quarterbacks come out, right? Like, Nate, tell me a draft. Show me a draft where you have five franchise quarterbacks that came out in the same draft. You're not, no, not everyone's going to hit on all these guys just because there are five names that seem to have separated themselves. So I would say this. As you know, I like Zach Wilson a lot, and I think that um, Trevor Lawrence is going to be at least really good. The only other guy in this draft where I look at him and I go, he's going to be a good quarterback, is Justin Fields. And I think if you're the Chicago Bears and you've never had a good quarterback, I mean, I was mentioning BYU quarterbacks, Jim McMahon, right? Stephen A., they won the Super Bowl with him. He won great as a pro. He's all right. And he comes out and says the Packers were a better organization than the Bears to play for. He was a third stringer when Favre won the Super Bowl. He started on the greatest team of all time when the Bears won the Super Bowl in 85. The Bears had been such a sad sack team when it comes to quarterbacks um, my entire life. I'm not a Bears fan. I'm a, I'm a Giants fan. But I feel for Bears fans. They're football obsessed. And they never get a quarterback. If Justin Fields is not taken in the top three, and I don't think he will be, and the Bears were willing to give up all that draft capital and players to go grab Russell Wilson, who I understand is a proven commodity, although not paid like a rookie quarterback, obviously, then you would think less than they'd have to give up for Russell Wilson would let them trade into the Falcons slot and grab the quarterback, the best available guy. I think Justin Fields will be sitting there. I think he can be a franchise quarterback. And the Bears can't get gun shy because they blew it with Trubisky, right? They can't keep selling Andy Dalton and the like to that fan base every season. They got to draft a franchise quarterback, trade up, draft Justin Fields. It's a tough one for me because I don't necessarily disagree with you. I understand where you're coming from because even though Matt Ryan's got three years left on this deal, uh, they can easily let him go in 2022, and we understand that, and they can move towards the future. He is 35 years of age, by the way. They could choose to do that. But here's what I think about Max. First of all, your tight end spot, I think it was the kid Hurts. I mean, he, was, he couldn't get open down the field. Uh, he was supposed to be an upgrade and athletic and speedy, but couldn't get open when it really, really counted, particularly down the field. And that hurt him. So you think about Pitts obviously being the elite generational kind of talent at the tight end spot that he is. That's one option that you could go to. All right. And that would just buffer a passing attack that was already top five. I think it was, I think it was ranked fifth passing attack because you had Julio Jones, you had Calvin Ridley, you had Matt Ryan throwing for over 4,500 yards. Uh, struggled in the red zone, but between the 20s, obviously he was completing a lot of his passes. Here's what I think about, though. What was the real problem with Atlanta? There are many problems, none more so than their secondary. They ranked dead last against the pass. And so when you think about a guy like Sertan coming out of Alabama, we keep talking about how the Dallas Cowboys should get him at number 10. Who's to say he's going to fall at number 10? Because if you're talking about buffering your defense, with the exception of an elite pass rusher that wreaks total havoc against you and your opposing quarterbacks, how about shutting down one side of the field because you got an elite corner? That's going to vastly improve your secondary. I'm sorry. A certain four? Uh, I'm four? saying no, no. You're talking about I'm, taking him out. I, yeah. Trading I'm down not, I'm and not taking saying, a hole. I'm, I mean, right. I'm not saying they should. Please <gasps> okay, don't get sorry, me wrong. Sorry, sorry. Because I, I, because I understand Pitts is generational. I get that. I truly do. All I'm trying to say is that if you yeah. look at how they struggled, no, right. they were the worst pass defense in the National Football League. And if you Matt Ryan, you can sit there and say, look, offensively, we putting up points. We moving the football. We got a top five ranked yeah. passing attack. Excuse me. Could you get some stops for us and stop asking us to score 30 points a game in order to win a damn football game? You could make that argument. I don't think it'll happen. I think it'll more likely be Pitts or a quarterback like you said. But I would also say, damn, when you look at their pass defense, grabbing an elite corner might be the answer. I, I don't think you're wrong about that. Sorry to jump the gun. <laughs> I was going to say, Sertana 4 is, is a reach, but Sertana yes, later on, getting some additional draft capital is sorely needed for a defense that was terrible last year. And now they've got Dean Pease coming out of retirement, which I think has been quietly an underrated move by this team. Atlanta upgraded in a big way on coaching. This team is going to be better than they were last year just because of they got unlucky in close games, which is usually a sign you're going to be a better football team. And now they've got Arthur Smith, terrific play caller, Dean Pease, legendary defensive coach coming to town. They should be better situated to take advantage of the talent they have. But on the defensive side of the ball, unlike the offense, Stephen A., you're 100% right. 
the talent is lacking because it's not just the secondary. They need help at edge. They need help at safety. They need help at linebacker. So while I understand the temptation of going all in on defense and going shock and awe with Kyle Pitts and just trying to win games by scoring 40 points, we saw that last year. Dallas did it the first four games of the season. And they lost most of them, despite scoring 38 points with a better quarterback and Dak Prescott. So if Atlanta is not willing to take Justin Fields, which frankly would be my preference, but what they've done pushing Matt Ryan's money out signifies they're going to ride with him, I actually think sticking with defense, trading down, building on that side of the ball would be a really smart approach. Right, and if they trade down, it's like the Bears are picking like 20th. And, and in the second round also, the 20th pick. Right in the second round. The Bears have enough draft capital, I would think, to move up, to put a package together, to move up and grab a franchise quarterback and also give the Falcons enough draft capital to round out the roster on defense with impact players. That's what should happen here. But not just the Bears. I mean, shoot, Denver and Carolina should also be fighting with each other for a quarterback, the, the quarterback of their choice if Fields is available there. If I'm Atlanta, I put a giant for sale sign on that number four pick. I say, yeah, you can wait till seven, you can wait till nine and see who's available, or you can jump all these teams that need quarterbacks, including the Patriots, and get the guy you want. Okay, because they shouldn't settle for the 20th pick. They should get seven or nine, and then they can get Sertan or one of the better defensive players. But why would they make that trade, Mina, when they're likely to get, you know, a good chance at least, that they can get their guy without making that deal? They're close enough, and when you look at the needs of teams, they're probably going to yeah. get something like what they want without making that deal. The Bears are the team that should be more desperate, number one, and number two, got to make something happen. They ain't going to get who they want just sitting there at 20. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.